Hi everyone, Rich Carlter. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training. We're here at FMTrain.tv, the live TV show every day on the FileMaker platform. All right, cool. So today is going to be on the FMP5, FP7 conversation. Uh, if you have questions about today's topic, it's a good topic. Uh, we've talked about it before, but sometimes people aren't aware of it, so it's it's a good topic to have. Today's conversation is all about understanding the mechanics of what you need to do to upgrade your copy of FileMaker. And the rub is with FileMaker is that historically Claris would uh, ship out updates uh, every year or so, major updates. So they go from FileMaker 14 to 15, then 15 to 16, and the number keeps counting up. Now they kind of broke this about three years ago when they decided that they were gonna wait for something special for 20, and then they ended up waiting three years. Um, and it's still not 20 yet. So uh, so what they did is they to buy time for themselves because it's not awesome yet. <laughs> what they do is they do 19.1 and 19.2 and 19.3 and 19.4 and 19.5 and 19.6. And so uh, the current shipping product is 19.4. They had a very public webinar, not under NDA, that 19.5 is forthcoming very shortly. Um, and so, uh, anyway, there's a lot of news coming up with them on what they're doing. I will try to break down the news as it solidifies and it becomes relevant to the folks out there. So that's really not today. If you have a question, you want to throw it out, ask me, ask me a question on anything. I'm happy to answer it. Today's topic is really about upgrading from older versions of FileMaker to current FileMaker. FileMaker, as it's currently called FileMaker, is a 33 year old at least product. I've been doing it for 33 years. And I started in FileMaker Pro really one and then two. And then, so they're at 19 version 19.4 and that, and it's taken them to get to that version, it's taken them 33 years to get there. So, um, so I know what I'm talking about, right? As a general rule, um, I'm not perfect. So some of you there are happy to correct me if I'm wrong, feel free to do that. As a general rule though, nine times out of 10, I'm accurate. It's called combat experience, right? Getting shot at and having bullets whiz over your head as a way of solidifying your training and your knowledge and committing it to long-term memory. So, uh, Jacob Taylor, are you there yet? Are you done yes. burritoing yourself? Can you burrito? Do you show me your video? I'm of burrito. Your, do, you, do you burrito? Show yourself. Do you, I don't think you want my the the burrito video, but <laughs> Andrew uh, Andrew Gonzalez has a question. I'm just I, I haven't pre-read your question, Andrew. If you're asking something in uh, not safe for work. We're just going to find out the hard way. Years ago, I was a coach at a martial arts gym. I would like to create a solution to help me help out the gyms keep track classes and student attendance. I have started with cl classes and table, uh, class and table. I create a layout. Da, 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 da. Andrew, uh, we have a couple different sample files that you should check out. And um, I'd also recommend sitting down with a FileMaker coach. It's totally free for an hour and walk through this. And the FileMaker coach can give you some ideas. So FileMaker coaches are things that largely live at my organization. Uh, some of our competing companies decided that with us that they wanted to have a coach too. But what they do is they take a, a senior level engineer and they dress them up as a coach. And um, most time coaches are more intermediate developers, right? Lower levels, not senior. You don't need a senior engineer who's the most expensive on the plant to tell you how to build something. So yeah, why don't we have a, uh, shoot us an email, to copy that and paste it to support at RC Consulting. And we can jump in and answer that for you. I can even talk to you about it if we get done at the end of the day we could talk about that where to start if you're if you're at the beginning of your road trip so 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 andrew your question is about i'm new to filemaker today what should i do this live webinar is actually um about all the people who've been here for like really a long time and they have really old solutions they never upgrade them one of the things that i recommend that people do and i'm going to move jacob briefly out of the way over here so i can find wherever the video went Quit moving your head, Jake, if you're making me seasick. So uh, <laughs> so over here, we did a video about this, right? And I'm not going to play the video and have you watch the video, but uh, this is a public service announcement, right, from Richard. Thank you very much. Here I am, wa waving my hands. And so what ends up happening is that uh, the FileMaker platform, like anything else, you should expect to, and there's Richard with an all blurry over there. Here I am. You should kind of expect to uh, do some maintenance on your FileMaker so, uh, solution, even if you're at, not adding new features to it. You should always expect periodically that you have to do a little maintenance. Uh, if you own a home, 
you have to do maintenance for that. If you own a car, you have to do maintenance for that. If you have an apartment and it's not your responsibility, maintenance still has to be done because otherwise you have leaks in the roof and the plumbing will leak and a, a, a outlet on the wall, your power out of the, power outlet of the wall, could they sometimes they just break and I have no idea why because they're pretty damn simple, but they go dead and I'm not clear on why that is. Anyway, so so you should expect to do maintenance as a short version of this conversation. And so as I as you go forward here, what ends up happening is that people build a solution, they invest a bunch of money in the solution, and um, what happens is they decide, oh, I don't have any budget right now. I'm not going to update it. And you got to be really careful with that mindset. So people say, well, how much should I budget for maintenance? Generally, if 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 you if you spend, I'm just going to give you a number. This is not a real number. If you spend a hundred dollars on a FileMaker solution for the year, hundred bucks. Okay, no FileMaker solutions on the planet cost a hundred bucks. But say you built a solution, you got it customized, hundred bucks. Okay. You should expect to spend about 10% of that every year just keeping it up to date, right? And so uh, 10% of 100 bucks is $10 a year, so about 10%. Well, it, in real companies, they spend five grand or 10 grand or 50 grand or 100 grand, depends how elaborate they need. Even if they don't spend the money on it, they're gonna spend their time. If you spend 100 hours building your solution, then you're gonna do about 10 hours a year of maintenance, maybe a little bit less, but there's gonna be some number in there that you're gonna have. And so that is if you keep up with it every year. What people tend to do is they go, I'm out of money. I don't have any money right now. I'm going to move myself over here real quick. There we go. And so what ends up happening, I'm just to animate this. So you got FileMaker 17 to 18 to 19, and they skip a couple versions, right? So, so a lot of times when you migrate from version to version, nothing breaks. If it's a small jump, nine times out of 10, there's almost nothing that breaks. But if you wait longer and you wait longer and you wait longer, a couple things happen. One is that you'll have an operating system that won't run. Uh, you Because people always update the operating system because from Apple, if you own an Apple computer, uh, Microsoft Windows is not quite this way. But if you own an Apple computer, which is a bunch of people in this audience, the operating system is basically free. You buy a Mac from Apple or whatever, and the operating system is free. And, they, and whenever it says, hey, upgrade to the latest operating system, they just always say yes without any thought of whether they're going to break FileMaker or not, right? So you get this issue where eventually FileMaker won't run or you have something really, really old, and that's kind of the conversation here. So so this is Club Penguin. This was a game that my daughter used to play years ago. And what ends up happening is that, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, is that uh, the penguins are here. And so what happens is is that you're using, file, say, FileMaker 17, and all the penguins are together using FileMaker 17 on the ice, okay? This is a really good analogy. I want you to everyone pay attention to this. This is really important. So what happens is is all the other penguins, uh, or some number thereof, uh, are going to want to, they go north. Uh, but they want to stay on the current version. One or two or five or half the penguins don't update, so they, they are living on a different iceberg at that point, right? And so what happens is that these penguins are using 18, this penguin's using 17. And, and of course, if the ice breaks and it floats three or four or five feet away, the penguin can either jump across or penguins are great swimmers. They can swim five feet, it's no big deal. It's really easy to go from 17 to 18 or from 19.1 to 19.2. It's an easy conversation to have. If you wait longer, what happens is is that your penguin gets a little farther away because now you're on FileMaker 17 over here, they're on FileMaker 19 over here. Your penguin's got to go farther, okay? And then you wait a little bit longer, and you know you should update, but you don't update. Eventually, your, pe so your penguin can swim, right? He can swim, he's going to update. It's farther, farther than swim, you can still do it. The problem is, is that if you wait long enough, right? Here we go. So FileMaker 5, okay? Uh, the penguin is in... Uh, Miami on an iceberg. However long the ice will last in 80 degree Pacific water, 70 degree Pacific water, it's really quite warm water. Um, the penguin can't swim back to the ice. It's dead. Okay, If it tries to swim, it's dead. It needs to find a different plan. That's what happens when people don't upgrade for like 20 years. Literally this conversation today is hey, if I didn't upgrade from 1995, what the hell should I do? That's only 26 years ago. Right? 27 years ago. No big deal. Half a bunch of people in this audience weren't even alive 27 years ago. Some of you were, right? So that's kind of this conversation. So that's what this video is. Margaret's going to post that around. Um, I want to pop out a very important slide right here. This is courtesy of Claris. And so, uh, and there's a video that was also done by Claris. 
And the problem is, is that Claris in this video, it's a four minute video of everything you need to know about upgrading your FileMaker solution. Okay, I hate to break it to you. I can't even cover the outline of this in four minutes. You can't cover, it's like how to be an astronaut in four minutes and mean it and actually mean it. NASA training, first minute, welcome, glad you're here. You're gonna strap you in the rocket and then we're gonna teach you all this stuff about physics and space and thrusters and computers and what if the computers try to kill you and all this sort of thing. And then in four minutes you're done, you're ready to go into space. Doesn't work that way. And so kind of unfortunately, here we are, Jacob Taylor. This is kind of where you come into the conversation a little bit. But understand, there's a difference between the versions of FileMaker, right, a version, these are versions. We're currently down here, and really this should say 19.0, 19.1, 19.2, 19.3, 19.4, because each one of those is really a very, very separate version, because 19.0 came out three years ago. In fact, is, is 19.0 still supported at the current time, Jacob? That is a good question. I, I actually it's, don't know the it, answer. Either it's not supported or it's right on the edge of being cut off. So yeah. they have a little, I'd have to find their little chart. They have yeah. dates for each point release. So or when it's going to die. Yeah. So, yeah. so the conversation is that what we're going to do is we're going to start kind of here. And so the, this is a file format, which means that if your file ends with this, like it says students, like if we're talking to, uh, <laughs> If we're talking to uh, Andrew over here, and Andrew says, I found a students and scheduling solution that has FP7 on it. Well, FP7 natively will work with these versions of FileMaker. If you open an FP7, we're going to do this here shortly, I'll open FP7 in FileMaker, any of these versions, it will convert it for you automatically. So if you have it, I, I get emails from people asking about FP5. FP5 was a file format um, that was rolled forward. And the problem was, and it's why it's not a four minute conversation, <clears throat> is that there are some important things to know about crossing this line here. And there's some really important things about crossing this line here because the conversion, the file format conversion, this one here, it was epically bad. In fact, there were people that swore they would leave the FileMaker platform at the time it was Claris uh, pulling this stunt. I think it was Claris, yeah, it was Claris. Um, if they did this, they would quit and never come back again. I'm being absolutely serious. I'm not being flip. It was a really, in fact, none of the people at Claris for the most part were around for this. They don't know anything about this. They, if they watch this video, they'd be like, feeling like they're watching the history channel, right? They don't know anything about this, okay? So here we are, a little history education. So this is what you had in the early 90s, 90, 91, 92, 93, right around there. Somewhere in there came 90, V4, V5, V6. Somewhere around 99, 2000, 2001, somewhere in there is where FP7 comes out, okay? Here's the rub with this, and it's why it's not a four-minute video. In order to convert an FP7 video, and I'm, I'm over here moving stuff around because I'm stuck on one tiny screen. I have this folder here called AAA. I'm going to open up the, this is the uh, white paper that Clara said that you should read. This is not even the full-size white paper. This is an abbreviated white paper on what it takes to migrate from here to here, okay? These are all the issues, right? Right. These are all the issues, and I'm gonna put myself, well, kind of right here. All the issues here, here's, here, here we go. All the issues that you need to consider when moving from FP5 to FP7. And so you look at this document, right? And once again, no one at Claris, unless you're like been an engineer and you've been there since forever, none of their managers know about this, right? Rick Kalman all I, does. All I see is brief and 195 pages. It's 100 and pages. These are all, so I get down here, overview. This is still a relevant document, fortunately. Some are, a lot of them are retired. A bunch of them that uh, that are now 50 or 60 or, or 25 at the time they did this. So it talks about how the, how the, how the things has changed, how it's converted, how it's totally ra uh, radically different. And then they, after you learn all about the new file format, then they start digging through the issues, right? And so there's 200 and some odd issues with uh, that you have to address, right? And so somewhere, wherever it starts, down here somewhere, as I'm down, down to page 114, this is all really single space technical stuff. This is really deep, okay? So, uh, let me see, I scroll down here. Where does it start with the actual, like it's like a dictionary of issues. Here we go. Conversion issues and resolutions. So even if you don't pay attention to the previous 139 pages, these are each thing that will break 
uh, when you move this when you try to move your file and some of these will cause the file to not work at all ever okay it's not like a little issue and so to frame how old this data is there are two people Todd where where were you did you do FileMaker 5 Todd Dignan is he there did he do FileMaker yes 5? yes okay. I'm here okay so yeah, I actually so, started in uh, FileMaker okay so yeah. so there are three people at uh, RCC uh, who, who, out of the 30 we have, who can talk about this because we were there. Dave Henderson, but he retired, so that effectively makes Dave dead. As much as I love Dave, he's basically dead. Now we're down to two people, okay? Me, the CEO, who's not going to work on your project, and Todd Dignan, who's busy. Two of us, that's it. Everyone else is like, God, what was it like to like walk to school five miles barefoot because there were no cars? And no electricity. Literally, that's the conversation we're having. That's how old this is. And so, this is the checklist, assuming that you actually want to read this checklist to go through it. So, Claris does this video, four minute video, how to convert it. You'll be good, baby. Right? Uh uh. So, what, what this means is when I see someone come to me and they say, I have an FP7 file and, uh, and as a consultant, as a developer, I'm a developer, okay? And I get paid for my time, okay? As much as I'm doing free stuff here and I do a ton of free stuff, like mostly Richard Carlton, I'm the CEO. Most of all my time is free. I give it away for free. My engineers mostly bill for their time. I give mine away for free to help the community. It's also good PR for me, but at the end of the day, it's really free. And so I come to people and they go, hey, I've got this file, FP5, I want to update it. When they come to me and tell me that, they, that tells me several things. One, this person never wanted to do the 10% of your maintenance to keep it up to date, and they put it away, and they put it off, and they put it off, and they might not even be the original people at the company, probably not anymore. And if they never wanted to spend the 10% a year to keep it up to date, why now are they are they really willing to spend what it's going to take to fix it? Because if you have an FP5 file, let me help you out with a really cruel, harsh statement here. If you have an FP5 file, that's like a horse with four broken legs. What do you do with a horse with four broken legs, Jacob Taylor? You do not uh, build your business on top of it. <laughs> Jacob was very nice about that. Yeah, you shoot the, the, the actual – it goes back to a far side joke about veterinarians – Horses don't mend well. If they break bones, you actually put them down. You euthanize them. You shoot the horse. And so if you have an FP5 file, we, it's not – there's almost no one left alive who can help you with it. this. You could, yeah. you could open it up in those old versions file maker, take screenshots of what it looks like, document as much as you want, maybe export the data if you want to export as a tab file or something. You're going to have to rebuild the file, period. Not really negotiation, okay? Uh Ah, David Angel says he's reading the first FileMaker from manual from 1985. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yep. Okay, so yep. De Kyle Williams says, don't build your business on a horse with no legs. I love the things that we learn here. That should be a shirt we have, right? So, so anyway, so this comes up. So we give away FM starting points, the new CRM. We gave it away. We sent emails out to everyone. Everyone here should have got an email about us, how to download the new a uh, light version of FM starting point with a new design surface. It's functionally the same as the previous version, um, but it has a new design surface in there, and it's in beta, so if you want that, go check it out. But we give away free solutions. Half the people that come through the door need some variation of a CRM, whether it doesn't do all the CRM stuff, but it does customers or contacts or just does products or just does projects and jobs or does all of it. It's already free. So take screenshots, export the data, build a new solution, okay? There's no drag and drop. You can drag, okay, back up. You can drag an FP file to into FP7, assuming you have a computer that will run FP7. I don't have a computer that will run this. Um, it will convert the file, unless the file is extraordinarily simple, like, um, remember back here, every table, every file was a table. There were no multi-single uh, file solutions, right? So unless your file is like one file with one table and one script that's really basic, it's not going to work. It won't work at all. Um, it, it, will, it, it might convert. You might try to open it. You put it on the FileMaker server, and to open it takes you 30 minutes to open the file if it ever opens. Stuff like that will happen. Just bizarre. I could go into why that is. 
I'm not going to waste everyone's time with that. You need to rebuild it. If you have an FP7 file, you can drag and drop it on FMP12, and generally it will convert. It will generally convert successfully. There are some things that break in here. That's why Todd Digna is here, so we're going to cut to Todd. Todd is there. Ah. There he is. Okay, so this is Todd. He's old as f Okay, I don't know how else to say that, okay? He's actually older than I am, which is saying something, since I'm 73. So, Todd. Uh, yes, sir. What was your experience? We have a we have a fictional customer. We're going to change the name of this customer. We're going to refer to them as Moo, as in cows mooing. Moo Water. So, Moo Water is a company, okay? Moo Water is a company, real company. They've uh, And they've spent to upgrade. And they went through an FP7 to FMP12 file conversion a while back. And um, what happened with that conversion? What, what, what did you get snagged on? What was the big one there? Uh, the big one were the, well, it actually happened when FileMaker 13 came out. So we, we did the conversion at 12, from 7 to 12. Okay. And then when 13 came out, <clears throat> we got snagged on the style sheets, on the themes that uh, FileMaker introduced. And so... Um, they started complaining about how slow it was and we convinced them uh, to go ahead because FileMaker was really promoting you know the style sheets and how that actually slowed down a ton of solutions when they did that when they introduced that and they had the uh, was it the classic version right that was the classic theme and where FileMaker came back, or Claris came back and said, don't use the classic theme because it slows everything down. We messed up. So um, then uh, we did the conversion. Um, we spent a year on it. It was a large, um, one of the largest projects I have ever worked on. And we converted um, but what, all what, the objects. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. So you so you're basically, the main thing you're focused, you drag, so you drag and dropped it, and it opened up and it worked, but right. the layout rendering was slow, and the computers yes. it was slow on were fundamentally uh, window underpowered Windows machines. Okay, because because I'm just going to throw out a little hot tip here for those of you wondering if you're developers, if your customer doesn't, if they don't want to upgrade and they don't want to spend for maintenance on you on FileMaker, they're probably not spending money on maintenance on other things like new computers. So. We have old computers with, what, four gigabytes on Windows kind of stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. So a lot of them even only had two gigabytes. <gasps> <clears throat> Look at FileMaker's minimum back then, right? Yeah. Well, yeah just because old. it's minimum doesn't mean you should do it, right? Right. But that's what businesses do, right? So, you, you know, you were talking about um, spending, having a budget to upgrade. Mm -hmm. Part of that needs to be in hardware as well. Um, so... Yeah, just the the style sheets. It took initially the 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 home window when it when it started. It would take I want to say like four or five minutes after okay. the conversion, okay. and then after we did the style sheets, it opened up in like fifteen seconds. Right. So and so I'm gonna briefly kind of cover this if I can figure out how to hide me and to put me somewhere and to... Okay, here we go. So we're going to walk through this real quick and we'll kind of talk about this because it's, it's a useful talking point. Uh-oh, there's you just see my forehead. It's my forehead. You know, how are you? Right, so... You're, you're I, talking from below. I'm yeah. talking from below. I, I, someone could <laughs> do a picture of another face up here. All right, so this is FP7. So this going... Er, I'm going to get rid of the mega document. Going from here to here is doable depending upon various factors, you might want to go and resurface your layout. Servicing means you go in the layout and you kind of rebuild it. We'll talk about that. Going from here, please uh, shoot your horse, put out its misery, and build the solution from scratch. Take screenshots, etc. but you can't pay. I mean, Todd, do you want to, I mean, you're one of the last people alive who can do this. Do you want to pay to do a conversion process and go to that mega document and do no. all that? I would, I would, no, I would definitely rather, in fact, I'm doing a rebuild on... Um, oh, this, that's right. This is a biotech company that we project. can't mention their name. Yeah, and right. so they, they have the same thing, and, they, and they have been re, they've been using this stupid thing and never reinvesting in it, and they're finally doing a rebuild. Okay, so let's talk, so we're going to have a simulated 
this is a simulated conversion so down here I have 19 dot whatever it is 4.2 probably okay I'm gonna come down here I'm gonna have FileMaker Pro this is a student record of all things which is kind of funny um, I'm gonna drag it on the FileMaker down here it says hey I want to convert this so I'm gonna zoom in here real quick I want to convert this we're gonna convert it um, rename the old file here and so it does a conversion right so it renames the old one there the new one will be called the extension is right there FMP 12 uh, a lot of times on the Mac or Windows the, the extension may not be seen just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's there I guarantee it's there right so you uh, on your computer you could I tend to want to put the extensions on them so I know what they are a lot of people they're hidden a lot of people they only access it on the server your end users they don't care Right, so we say save. I'm going to zoom back out. So it took an FPMP 12.7. This this was this file was written in FileMaker uh, 4.5 or no six seven eight or nine or ten or whatever something like that all the way up to 11, and now it's running in 19.4.2. So it actually works. So here we go. I create a new record. Blah blah blah. I can put some information in here. It works great. Uh, take a picture of Todd. Put that in there too. It's going to save it to my desktop after I have to wait because it's a Mac and it's stupid. There we go. All right, so there's Todd. So it works. All right, so the problem is that Todd's talking about is that if you go to layout mode, okay, uh, what it's doing is to convert uh, when, when they went from FileMaker 7 to 12 uh, format, they basically started rendering the layouts essentially from a, from your perspective, everyone's perspective, essentially as some XML and some CSS and really kind of almost HTML. It's not HTML, but it's kind of like that, where this cascading style sheets tell you how this designed. Prior to that, in here, it was uh, it was this very legacy internal coding that FileMaker did. So what this part of the conversion is to take their old format and convert it and put CSS in here. The CSS that you will see still to this day is over here. That classic right there. The classic theme allows a very important thing to happen. This file looks identical. So Todd's still there, or he was still there. There he is. Yep, I'm still um, here. It looks identical from 7 to 19. It looks identical. It feels identical. It's identical. So the classic theme is designed to fake the aesthetics of the old version. The problem is the classic theme, the CSS under here, is really fat. And I don't mean like Richard is slightly chonky fat. I mean Richard from the old days when I was over 400 pounds fat, right? And so uh, it's not good. It's not good at all. And if you have a Windows machine that's underpowered and you tell it to display the chonky, it's like if I tried to get in a Yugo and I was 400 pounds. Actually, I tried this once. I tried to get into a, a Mazda Miata sports car and I was 400 pounds. And I had to, I was such a big guy. I had to look above, it's a convertible. My head was above the window. My head was above the window. Todd, you'd have a similar problem. You're a tall guy. My head yep. was above the window. It's like some sort of stupid cartoon from. Warner Brothers, Disney, uh, Disney, or someone goofy's in the car and his head's above the window because he's so big. That's what happens here. And so your your FileMaker system from the old days had a lot of chonky stuff, and the new FileMaker has to render that very very fast. So what you have to do is you had to go into the system. We have video training on this. It's where you're dealing with over here on the right. You got cascading. Um, Sh uh, custom themes and shared styles. Custom themes mm -hmm. and shared styles. So I'm going to zoom in over here. We have videos on this and our paid video training. It's way more than what we can handle real quick right here. And I but also just sent uh, Margaret a link to post that gives a description of what that is from Claris. Yep, yep so. and I posted that across. So we're okay, good. Okay, great. Cool. So this is the classic theme here. It's very chunky, <clears throat> uh, but it's still here. And what you would do is convert this and go through the conversion. We talk about converting it. So the perf the amount of data, so people go, well, how is it, why is it faster? The classic theme here is very wordy, very, um, very, uh, very large. So the amount of data that, that to, to, to we do, we do a test, we do with the Wireshark, we do a test from the server to the client for you to render out the layout with no cache. We clear the cache is very scientific. You'd have a layout like this that could easily be a megabyte. We had a lot of them that were like 900K of CSS data to render that goes down to the pipe to the FileMaker 
client. Niner K that has to be processed and rendered. Okay. If you rebuilt the style and, 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 and you could rebuild it identically and have it look identical, but rebuild it where like each of these objects right here has its own in classic has its own complete copy of CSS. So, so instead of doing it that way, you'd have a shared, uh, CSS, so you say, I'm going to have a field, and then all these fields reference the same CSS. Well, if all these fields reference the same CSS, you send the CSS down once. So a 900 a 900K or a megabyte f uh, layout size becomes half that size. So the amount of data you're sending down could be half. Really awesome. Um, and that performance-wise can improve, could, could result in twice the performance. Todd, in your case, what was your results? Because you had those underpowered Windows computers. What happened with the performance when you did this? Oh, when we did this, it was about 30 to 40% overall. So, you know, some of them had faster, like I was talking about the homepage, that had way faster results. You know, that 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 was huge. It, it was like 300 times faster, 400 times faster than it was before I did seconds. Yeah. Yeah, you're going minutes to seconds. So cool. Um, but then you had other, <clears throat> uh, other like report windows where it had minimal effect. Um, okay. But um, that also was based on the the number of records it was loading as well. So anyways. sure, sure, absolutely. So that's kind of the idea. So you're going to get a performance improvement. It doesn't mean you'll get double. I've actually seen people go faster than double, and in some cases maybe not so much because the the CSS really wasn't the limiting factor. So Todd, that's why I wanted to have you here. If you want to hang out, you can hang out, or you can jet, or whatever you want to do. But that's the piece I wanted to have you relay to everyone. So yeah, I'm gonna hang out. Okay, cool. Okay. So you're gonna hang out. I'm at, you may or yep. may not be on screen. Mr. Taylor, why don't you walk us through your perspective? Uh, and if you have a checklist on your screen, uh, mm -hmm. if you want to share that. So this is Jacob. For those of you who know Jacob, Hi, he helps, yep. he's a server, FileMaker or server uh, expert. And when I say expert, I mean, I know one other person in the FileMaker community that's probably better than Jacob, and he ain't better by much. And that'd be Wim DeCourt. I was so, say, I think that's Wim. That's Wim. <laughs> But but I, so. I would put Jacob up against up anyone. I think you'd hold your own against Wimp. So uh so go. So tell me about what your what is your checklist? Show your screen. What are your thoughts? Sure. So because you run into this all I, the time with people, right? So correct. Yeah. So I'm one of the things that I inherited uh, at RCC is the upgrading of the old clients. Um, I don't mean old FileMaker, although that's a component of it. Um, but upgrading. Uh, people who have not done that 10% maintenance that Richard is talking about um, and suddenly either did a hardware failure or something else, they get that little light bulb going off. Hey, we need to spend a little to, to get this thing up to date. I get that, sorry, that's, that's the little light bulb going off. Um, and, and so they show up in a panic, usually due to something like hardware failure um, on their server, and realizing that they're running version 11 or something like that. Uh, and, you know, 19 is out. 19 has been here for three years and is old at this point. Everyone's like, when is 20 coming? Uh, and they're over here like, we're on 11 still. So I deal with those clients. Um, I have done multiple of these conversions. I'm in the middle of the second or third third big project of that I keep I can't keep track it's second or third um, but involving like a hundred files each project okay. um, again they're at p7s so they had relationships but not single file um, and so it's it's those very classic multi-file solutions every single file is its own table some of them were brought up from fp5 you know, successfully, we'll say it seems to work anyway. At that time, yeah, um, they did that. At that yeah. time, right? Yeah. And then, and then these are coming. They're FP7 format, but they're going from like FileMaker 10 or 11, depending on which project it was, to direct to 19. Um, and so, like the minor part of the work is doing the conversion that. Richard demonstrated earlier. The larger part is making sure they test it because. Um, like ideally, you know, if your solution is simple enough, you'll run it, it'll convert, it'll pop back up. Yep, it'll be in classic mode, but it'll it'll look basically the way that it did. Um, and and so if that's all that you run into, you know, you you basically got away scot free, and you're 
you know, right in home um, to talk about how awesome it was. However, there's stuff you can run into. So for example, actually the project that I'm on currently, uh, they have a plugin in their solution. And, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a 10 era plugin. So that company doesn't even exist anymore. That made the plugin. Uh, okay. So we'll just yeah. So we'll what, just what, what plugin is it? Just out of curiosity, you want to name it? Uh, it's called Sync Deck. S Y N C. Oh, that was uh, that was Jay Gonzalez's company. Um, yeah, that was kind of an interesting. Uh, it was a it was an attempt to, attempt at a syncing solution, mm -hmm. and then Jay ended up I think joining with Beeswax, but that product uh, never worked great. Uh, and I'm not picking on Jay. I don't think he built it, but it was. Uh, the you know I, I, a lot of people tried to build sync and the and by far the best product that worked really reliably was uh mirror sync from 360 works so yeah so sync deck doesn't exist hasn't existed in a long time so. yeah so that and and so they were not actually using it for like a, a syncing solution per se um it was used as like an out of band uh, process to do audit logging, which is a super interesting use of it at least. Mm -hmm. um, so I converted them up from FP7 to FMP12 and wouldn't you know it, the file doesn't open. And it's not because there's anything wrong with the file, um, like it's broken, but it is broken because you can't get in. Why can't you get in? Because they do a plugin check at on the a plugin that couldn't po yeah couldn't possibly run in 19 under any circumstance and so and so you so you start there <laughs> and you have to keep going through the file and then finding out where all the little extra issues are and stuff like that so um just as one example and then yeah i can what are the other gotcha why don't you show your screen there and what, what yep. once you jump over let's talk about the other gotchas because it's basically the core your core file maker features come across from seven to two FMP12 pretty well, but it's all the integrations, the external integrations. It's the PHP pages, the, the plugins, the ODBC drivers, Christ, right? That's a big one too. All the ODBC interactions. There we go. These are my notes from... I'm going to move that out of the way. All right, Jacob, oh, yeah. so walk, me, walk us through this a little bit. Let me check. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to jump up and grab a drink real quick. I'll be back in 30 seconds. So You're good. Keep, keep just, talking. Go, baby. Yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. So these are – this is. I'll, I'll, I'll just – as a preface for everyone watching, the list that we're looking at is incomplete. Um, but the – and I'll add, I'm going to add more to it. We may turn this into like an official – it's not it, – it, it's not like a thing that will solve your problems, but it's useful um, as a place – for like you can pick up kind of kind of check boxes to go through make sure that you've hit all the details at least so i we start i start out more broadly because as always again to go one step back in the conversation if they have if, if the client that's doing this giant upgrade has not been spending their you know picking the number 10 percent per year or something whatever some number some amount that's relevant to them as a business um if they've not spend been spending that on their maintenance you have to start with basics like is the hardware up to date can it run the current versions of the software and all that kind of stuff same thing for operating systems um i put it in here just so people don't forget you want to also look at your other software i mean you know ever we're here everybody uses filemaker um but you know, if you have old versions of Microsoft Office, just as an easy example, or QuickBooks, another easy example, um, the ancient versions they sometimes will not run on modern operating systems, and so you have to, you know, those are those are upgrade considerations as well. Um, but to talk about FileMaker, there's a few points to hit. So the conversions between FP7 and FMP12 usually go reasonably, um, usually. Uh, the biggest thing, and if you have a single takeaway, so the FP5, as we said before, just rebuild it, period. Um, but for FP7s to FMP12s, you can usually get away with it. However, there's there's two notes that you want to pay attention to um, that are really big. One is you need to test everything. Um, and so what that means is using the application um, like going through, clicking all the buttons, making sure scripts still function, that kind of basic like functionality testing, um, because it may not. Uh, script steps have changed. Uh, some, like, they don't work the same way as they used to. Uh, some, you know, they got rid of that approach, and now there's a new one, and maybe the switchover is pretty easy to do for your Atomicer engineer, but, like, someone has to go do that, rewrite the code, etc. cetera. Um, there's, 
the performance conversation that Richard and Todd had, I'll just note that and shelve it. So that's one thing. Theming will eat you alive, especially if this is an older solution with a lot of records and stuff like that. Um, the solutions tend to get progressively worse performance-wise the more stuff is in them, and it's because of how the classic mode stuff works, rendering in modern versions of FileMaker. Uh, the short version is it's not great, it's not very fast, and so if, you're have, if, you, know, if you have a, a file that you've not done this theming on, and it was you know, you haven't thought about it in years but previously it was an FP7 file and it got converted, you know ages ago, maybe, hopefully. Um, but you're at 19 and you're like, eh, it could be a little faster. It's a conversation to have with your FileMaker engineer, to be honest. Sure. Um, th sure. Theming, uh, little performance improvements and stuff like that, that, those are always good things to do anyway, but that actually may be part of the conversation, like a big one as to why the file's faster or slower than you might hope. Um, so, can I'm I, gonna, I'm can, gonna I, can I add one thing go to in, go. into this right now, is that with the theming, um, they went to enlightened, right? So if you convert a file now, the classic mode's not going to be there. The classic thing, it's going to be enlightened. I just did. I just did. A okay. This was a conversion. It so a, it's yeah. it's still classic right here. But if I go to, let's go through this a second. So what Todd's saying, there was some sort of change where they you can't get it classic anymore, except I just did this and it's here. So the it's, question is, if I go to layout, I go change theme. Yeah, it, classic it shows up in the list, but it's you can't touch it. It's, okay, it's, so it's a... what, what if I change to minimalist? Okay, now it's on minimalist up here. For those of you who see that, change to minimalist right here, right? So let's see. Uh, so I, I, by the way, that's a shortcut right here. So that button right there is a shortcut to go to. Uh, lay, I'm in layout mode. Layout mode, wherever that's at here. Where are we at? Mode. Layout mode, right? And then I go to change theme once again. And so uh, notice that classic uh, isn't here gone. anymore. It's gone. Yeah. So it's what they're trying to do is suppress you from doing something stupid. Right, Todd? That, that's what Todd's trying to say. Uh, so it was Correct. there as long as you – if you change away from it, then you can't go back to it, right? Um, yeah. And so then if I go to a different layout in here – because remember, when you convert over – it converted all the layouts to that that theme. So I go here, this layout's still in classic theme. So that once again, so the theme, so you understand how it works, themes are saved into your FileMaker file. Whatever themes your FileMaker file needs are saved inside the FMP12 file, okay? So classic is still in there, but you're not gonna be exposed to it. They kind of hit it unless it's on here, right? So of course, like anything else in FileMaker, if you're gonna do a layout conversion, You'd have the classic theme here. You would duplicate the layout, hot tip, and then work on the copy, changing the copy so you can compare back and forth. Or actually have two different files or two different windows. So they're so you're on screen and so you have like maybe, well, this one's already changed a minimalist. If I go to like say list view, we're gonna edit list view. Here's that's list view here, here's list view here, but I'd probably wait, why don't we duplicate this layout? Lay it duplicate layout. So now I'm gonna duplicate it, copy. I'm going to change this one to sophisticated touch, whatever that is, okay? So now, so, does that, that make sense, everyone? Yep. Yeah. Hey, Richard, you can also go into, on a Mac, you can go into File, Manage, Themes, and it'll tell you how many layouts have what um, yeah, theme. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. So That's it's something, I, I don't know that I've ever used this before. I don't think I've ever used this window before. There we go. Well, it happens, right? There's a product's a big product. There's so much in FileMaker that I don't know that any one person does it all. It doesn't happen. Yeah. So, all I right. Love, cool. I love that managed themes thing. I use that in our in the hosting you, database. For do you use that quite a bit? Over. Okay. Yep. Yep. And it, it's because we we came in and like the. I don't know if you remember or not, but that, that actually the theme that we had that was in the hosting database when I took it over yeah. was a classic theme. Oh, um, could it be, was, yeah. It was adapted and cleaned up and looked nice and all that stuff, but it, it was it was it was a uh, like what do you call it? So so it was in the 16 era where we still had classic theme inside FileMaker as a choosable option, and so ah, okay. you could consolidate on a classic theme. Uh, in the same sense of you know making a new enlightenment or, or something right. else like that, um, and so that's what had been done previously. Um, yeah. Anyhow, 
The, so one other tool, and I'll, I'll shut up, but <clears throat> one other tool that's really great for increasing the speed that you can use to, to um, just investigate your, um, your system is base elements. It'll tell you yeah. um, where your errors are in the scripting. This is for the overall system, right? Not just for theming, but it also tells you the themes that are when they're being used and um, if there's issues. Okay, so let me be so. clear about that because um, I've always talked to base elements about this, and they they I, I guess Claire thought that base elements was really cool. And they would copy the company. So, um, goy, yeah, FileMaker. So, uh, this company called Goya, which is run by Nick, and I'm spacing on his last name. Uh, uh, I haven't talked to him in a little while. Yes, his website's a lot of date. Um, they make a, but they run all this stuff, they keep up to date, very up to date company. Um, they have base elements. Base elements. Uh, is more than one thing. It means more than one thing. It's a plugin. It's also a um, maintenance diagnostic product that you buy. The plugin is free. The maintenance diagnostic product is not free, and I buy it. It's a really great, it's by far, in my opinion, the best diagnostic product out there. Very simple, very reliable. Uh, so here's the base. So here's the base elements. This is the base elements plugin. You come over here to the plugin. And it's called the base elements plugin. And then over here you have the base elements, not the plugin, right? Uh, Kyle Williams says I would definitely recommend base elements. I use it all the time. Um, it's by far the best FileMaker diagnostics tool, and other people agreeing with him. I absolutely agree with that. Um, it's well supported. I write a check for it. It's like if like if you have go to and so for those of you wondering about this. If you go to your, you know, you already know what's going to happen, what I'm going to say here. If you go to your critical third-party vendors that you have to have, you must have their product, base elements, monkey spread, monkey spread software. Um, that's a joke, monkey bread, right? Christian Schmidt, who's probably not around. And then, uh, and the last one is 360 works with their stuff. These three companies largely don't overlap too much, and they make, you can solve pretty much all the prep, all the problems with the FileMaker platform, including scalability issues with these companies' products. You can fix all the limitations by using these products. Um, there's pretty much nothing you can't do with FileMaker without a combination of what I would call Goya stuff, 360 stuff, and monkey bread stuff. Okay, Goya's case, I'm using term, but Goya to indicate it's at least two or three products in there you should look at. 360 Works has got a whole stable of horses products, right? Whole stable of products, and then uh, Monkey Bread has, now well, one main product, but a couple kind of add-ons for it. So the short version is if if you had to distill this down into one drink, like one drink of a drink, Jacob, if you want to throw your face back up, um, oh sure, if you want to distill this down, uh, I would say if you're on FP7 right drag and drop it and then press every button to verify and test your your features right test test yep. everything be just because it opens doesn't mean it all works i think that's what you were trying to say earlier and then todd got yeah. it there and then and so that and i want to emphasize on that if you drag and drop it over right like i did this over here a little bit ago and uh i did this conversion so uh this is the new file here convert it from this old file right here Okay, and I'm in here. I would actually go to every button on every layout and test it. Now this this one probably will be okay because it's essentially, if I go Command Shift D, I manage the database structure. It's got one table, so how hard can it possibly be? And the relationships are none. So this one's really thin. If you have a FileMaker 5 file that's this minimal, an FP5 file, and you want to convert it, go for it. You, it'll convert, but remember, you can't go from 5 to 12. You have to go 5 to 7 and 7 to 12. So that brings up another link that I wanted to point out here. It's a great one, Margaret, if you haven't shared this with everyone. This is the Claris tech support kind of FYI. Kind of here you go. Good luck. 
And so here's like, hey, you want to convert? This is some guidelines, not really even guidelines. They don't even begin to have that. But you might need a copy of FileMaker 11 to open up your FP5 file to do that first conversion. Remember, it's a two-hop conversion. So here's actually a trial software for FileMaker uh, Windows and FileMaker OS 10. I don't have computers that will run this stuff. I, I think I do underneath my desk. Todd gave me a 1912 Mac whatever po with a Pony Express and a PowerPC <laughs> processor and whatever. I'll, I'll give you one <laughs> tiny hint. One, don't do this. Uh, but the second part of the hint is most of the software actually and horrifically still runs on Windows just fine. Um, the client that I was talking about earlier, they were running FileMaker 11 on Windows 10. It runs great. Okay. I, so that's terrifying. But so you ha so you use this uh, if you need it, but you need this one, which is most, mostly what you have. And if I try to yeah. like install it over here, I mean, I don't even know what's going to happen. I'm on an M1 processor; it's probably going to lose its mind. Oh, it won't. Yeah, I have a FileMaker 10 running on another machine over there on a uh, on Catalina, which is Mac OS 10.15, and it crashes on every other start and if it does run it runs about 60 seconds so if you need to get a screenshot or something you got about 60 seconds then it term the process terminates so a uh, really sketchy uh old software right so there you go and so it's on a clara server somewhere that is looks like a probably an isdn connection from 1912 right really slow here so i don't know why should be an apple server somewhere i don't know what they're doing anyway so other questions mark johnson uh question Qu question is a file format change anticipated when the new claris products will be claris had had the big long meeting right you guys a bunch of you were at the thing last tuesday um i haven't heard anything about a file format change uh yeah is there that, a file format conversion okay brutterman there's someone brutterman is the name of a cat on I think James's desk, he says I recently opened some FP5 files with FP10 and run Windows 7. Had to go back to an old Windows 7 virtual machine on Parallels, but I was able to recover the data. Good for you, yeah. So getting the data out's okay. Taking screenshots is okay. I uh, yeah. Uh, even though you can tell it to rename the old file, I would highly suggest making a backup of the file first before doing anything. Yeah, you always never want to be doing any live surgery on the only copy of the file you have, right? So recommend you don't do it that way. Mark Johnson, yep. the Marine, very thoughtful, good advice. Yeah, Ken, next one that's down. That's good advice, actually. Yeah, I'm going to get that one. Don't work on the live copy if you can, if you're doing something that's like brain surgery. Okay, so safe. Mark Mark goes, once done, once I'm done switching my Mac around with another one, I'm going to see if y'all can just have FileMaker Server 19 install the M1 Mac Mini and get P. Yeah, we can do that. Jacob Taylor can do that. Walk you through it mm -hmm. if you want. I don't. How could you do that on a live stream, Jacob? One hour. The FileMaker install is easy. I don't yeah. know anything about PHP in current OS X because of the what Apple introduced signing requirements. I think the entire so anything that's a service run on OS X has to be code signed by Apple, shared certificate with Apple and somebody Yeah, else. but we're using 19, or we're, or we're using 19 on Windows. Oh. Yeah. So, so I was I was about to say, hey, we use 19.4 or whatever on, win, on mm -hmm. with PHP all the time, Correct. but that's Windows. And I, and I have an installer for it, for Windows, actually. Mm -hmm. It's like double click and you're mm -hmm. on the latest version, which is awesome, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, the Mac stuff is more challenging because of that. Um, yeah. I, don't think it's impossible, but I haven't had to work it out because most of my on-site hosting clients are also Windows, actually, mostly moving to Windows, and then the ones that are not, actually, the ones I can think of are still Yeah. On uh, Mark, 18, what we but... ended up doing, as much as I love the Mac, we ended up, we're using AWS servers, um, Amazon EC2 servers, and I had Macs in my office that I had to, they were on-prem because I could control them, I could trust them, I could grab the actual Mac server and hold it, hold, hold it, I could hold it and touch it, it was in my office, I could give it, I could talk to it at night, oh, you're such a good Mac server, oh, yes, you are a good Mac server, I have a lot of cats, how you talk to a cat, right? 
But you had to kind of give up on that because we had some internet outages and California's power grid went to <laughs> about two years ago. And they, that we had no power for like 10, 12 days, right? Which is a long time. And I'm running, I have a big generator, but I never thought I'd run it 12 days back to back. And uh, the wife had to manage that. And, you know, uh, so anyway, so um, we went to Amazon, which means we moved to Windows. And I hated losing the control. But if you have a good IT person, like this person right here, and you trust that person, I'm going to be speak very frankly, not to f you, okay? Because I've been there when IT guys do that, IT guys and gals, okay? They walk off the job or they decide they're going to join the circus or something. Hap has happened. Um, you don't want to be boned by that. So you have to make sure you have a reliable person. This, the installation is reliable. Uh, when Jacob builds installations, they last quite a long time, don't they, Jacob? Normally, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I don't have issues on Monday anymore. Yeah, we don't. I schedule client meetings for 10 a.m. Monday morning because yeah, it used to be that Jacob the... would put out the fires. Yeah, so yeah. might want to call. Uh, yeah, so we we'll, we could do some more server conversations about uh, installing server and being doing servery stuff. Right, I'm happy to do that because everyone has questions about the server. Um, yeah. I'd have to work out how to get PHP on the M1. I mean, the for a developer or something like that kind of an installation isn't hard, but uh, but but right, you have to like wire it into FileMaker Server's Apache config, mm. and that's where some of the challenges present. Basically, um, I don't know if it's impossible. Probably not, but. All right. Well, it's more uh, annoying than it used to be. That's, that's it for now. Media sandbox, external data sources need to be checked upon in the conversions. Yeah, there's a whole pile of things that need to be uh, checked on. Uh, it's been a while since we saw Media Sandbox. How's it going? So yeah, so uh, we'll be uh, so tomorrow. I'm having a conversation more about uh, with with Christian about getting inside your customer's mind and being trying to stay ahead of them and what they're going to do. Um, and reading their mind. Uh, we call it telepathic unicorn, kind of a fancy term. But yeah, that's the idea. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. I uh, want to welcome everyone. Obviously, once again, if you have questions about the content today, you have a suggestion, something we didn't really talk about as well as you would like to see it discussed, send me an email. Please send me an email. I read the emails um, that come in and I respond to them. Um, and so if you have a question, support. Support at rcconsulting.com. And we'll be happy to answer your questions. And then uh, we'll be discussing with Clarice here uh, 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 more about what she is up to with the uh, shenanigans uh, with uh, Clarice, right? So that'll be awesome. Cool. All right. That's it for today. Jacob Taylor, anything else you have for us? No. Uh, if you're not running 19, you should get up to it. That's my... I would. Yeah, because 19.0 is three years old. So you're already, yeah. if you're not on 19, it's we know they're having a well. at least three years. So, yeah. We've okay. Not, I mean, there's, a, there's like a couple known bugs, stuff like that. Um, you know, ring me or email me or something, and uh, we'll see if they affect you or, you know. Cool. Do a little pre-flight checks, requirements cool. analysis. Awesome. All right, thanks. Filemaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Filemaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir. Oh,